Cool. Well, I'd just like to thank everyone uh, again. Um, coming to, to another iMoot session. I hope everyone's uh, holding up well. We're, we're almost at the halfway mark. Um, and this morning we have the wonderful Michelle Hollister, uh, which many of you will, will remember. Uh, Michelle did, I think, probably our first, well, it was our first presentation from the Antarctica. Um, so that was great. That was a couple of iMoots ago, I think. And uh, very much looking forward to Michelle sharing with us today. So I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Shane, and good morning, everyone. Um, I'll just let you know the government, in its wisdom, has us in open plan offices. So I'm actually in home, but um, forgive me if anyone walks past and says hello. There's not much I can do about it. I've got signs up, but people don't always read them before they, they walk past. Um, I wasn't actually planning on doing this talk until September when the at the actual moot throughout the iMoot, but there's a sea ice conference on which my boss wants me to go to, so it's probably not quite as well developed now as it might have been in a few months' time, but I still think it's worth having an actual discussion about um, the competency frameworks that we've got in 3.2 and where to, to delineate between what should be in the competency and what should be in the course content. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, I've been Moodling since 2009 and I've mostly been using it for competency assessment purposes. Um, I was when frameworks turned up in 3.2 to the extent that some of the people in the office had because I was raving about it and no one understood. Um, I have a Moodle for things that's not meant to be used for, that it wasn't designed for. So I use it in an operational environment as a a human connection process and that's what I'm trying to do in Antarctica um, and that's in a very low bandwidth environment so you think your network or your um, internet might be slow at home, you, it, believe me we are back into the pre-dial-up stages in Antarctica still so that makes it very challenging using something like Moodle but it's still very powerful. Um, and the other problem is that we are using versions of Firefox in our office that don't allow me to screen share with you. So I've done my talk up as a PDF. It's already on my course if you want to open it. It's it's available now. Um, but I won't be able to actually show you anything live, which is what I would have hoped to have done. Instead, we've got a bunch of screenshots on a PDF, so I do apologise for that. All right, so let's get into it. Um, gratuitous shot of what my office should look like when I'm in Antarctica. <laughs> it's um, a, a beautiful day in the front shot here and we're talking about Antarctic forecasters um, today and creating a competency framework to use for assessing them. So what I'm going to chat about today, my chatables, I'm going to give you a quick overview of competency in my world because we are not part of the vocational education and training sector, so we don't have a standardised um, set of competencies. So I'll take you through what I'm doing to, to get those. And then we'll talk about distilling the competencies down to performance elements and measurables, creating those measurables to meet the performance elements, and then mirroring the process, the same, the same distillation using a 3.2 competence framework. Um, then we'll hit the bit which is the interesting bit in my opinion, which is the perishables versus the non I'm going to propose that perishables should be a competency framework and that any non-perishables should be, sorry, only non-perishables the competency perishables should be a course load. And then I'll just show you the course connection. I haven't developed it very much yet. As I said, I wasn't planning on doing this. We'll see how we go. Interesting point here. So I'm uh, <clears throat> sorry, excuse my voice. Forecasters to go to Antarctica each summer, and we have a top, a top level set of competencies that are by organisation for aviation and for public weather and a few other things, but they are not. Um, they're not defined for Antarctic forecasters. So what I have done is um, taken these World Met Organization um, top level competencies, rewritten them so that I've got them for my forecasting competency. 
So we've got five basically cover our entire our entire job. Um, they're on the screen in front of you. They don't really matter for what we're doing today. But what I am going to do is take number five, which is communication, which most people have um, some connection to, and I'm going to going to be um, used within the framework and also within my courses. If I expand out that fifth competency, which is about communicate, what I've done is I've got, I've broken it down into performance dissemination of products, number two, which is about briefing, and then number three, which is about recording what it is that we say to people. So from that point in there, this slide connects to the next slide. These green ones in the middle here, these ones are all about briefing. So we've got different types of briefing. There's aviation briefings, marine briefings, head office briefings, public weather briefings, blah, 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 blah. There's any number of briefings that we have to do. So we need to make sure that our forecasters can communicate in an appropriate manner to, um, to get the message across properly. Um, I should note that we have a set of standard operating procedures, a very good set, I wrote most of them. We are developing standard operating procedures. They're not there yet, but we are working on them. They are, they change each season because the operations in Antarctica each season. So just looking at that breakdown, going from the top level competency to the performance criteria to what does that actually mean on a, in a measurable basis. You turn around and you want to moodle that. So the first hurdle that I had um, in the Bureau was permissions, in that teachers in the Bureau don't have permissions to create the um, competency framework um, elements, which is at the site administration level. So we had a new um, user profile set up that was a teacher who had permission to set up these competency frameworks. We still don't have all of the admin rights and site admin rights that a normal administrator would have to do everything that we could possibly do to make everything break, but we do have the permission to create this. The second hurdle was that we don't have a vocational education and training standard. So when we're at our competency is top level, we get to this point, or I got to this point, where it was a case of, well, should this bit here be in the competency framework or should this bit here actually be in the course instead? So this put me on my back foot for quite some time, to be honest. I had to think about it quite carefully and I had a chat with a lot of people around work about it. And I also went searching online to try and find that um, that delineation, that line where they say, okay, that, that stuff's days of work and this stuff goes into the course, but I couldn't find much on it. I did start a discussion topic in the, um, the Moodle forums on Moodle.org, but um, I think I only had one response there. So, <clears throat> that's why I'm here. <laughs> I'm going to show you what we've decided on and what, um, what we've come up with. And I'm kind of hoping that this group can say, all right, well, we think this is good and maybe we can put this into the documentation as a suggestion of where people delineate between the framework and the courses. Um, or maybe you pick something that's much more sensible um, and we'll, we can adapt that, to that and change our way to do that as well, just so that we have some kind of um, best practice standard type thing across, across the courses. <laughs> I'm just laughing, an old colleague of mine has just popped up and he'd probably do a much better job of this talk than I do. <laughs> anyway. Um, so we'll start at the top level competencies. Now these are the screenshots because I'm not able to share screen with you. So it's clunky, but you have to forgive me. So I've got the permission and I've created this Antarctic Forecaster Competence Framework. Now under that framework, we have, okay, Shane's just told me that my audio is a bit choppy, so I can kill my webcam, I think. Okay, hopefully that's better. Let me know if it's still not good. Okay, so um, competency is top level. We start with the, the framework here and frameworks are really easy to create so I haven't actually bothered giving 
interesting like they have um, description on how to do it because it's it's really actually intuitive I really quite like it um, but what you do is you start your competency framework so that's what mine's called and then you basically select your competency which this one down here is selected as an add competency and you can add in the elements underneath it so from this um, screenshots I showed you before we've got five top level competencies that fit under this this framework so those have each been added in now these little triangles here you can click on each of those individually and then expand the, the element so this is the um, the distillation that I was talking about before so if we go to the next level this is what I've got um, underneath each of the top of them now at the moment I am still just developing this there's a longer description once I've actually decided that I'm happy with the framework I'll go back and actually make them a little bit more logical to read but as you can see so the first one from before analyze and monitor has three main performance and agreements underneath it sorry performance elements underneath it similarly with warn and um, with quality assurance and then I've got three elements underneath that as well. Now, each is, under this set here, I've actually got 28 competencies listed for my course. Ma the majority of the guys that are still applying in my section at the moment have only got like three or four. They've got the top level competencies, but they haven't distilled it down any further. And that got me to thinking because um, when you look at all of the, the competency frameworks available in our Moodle site um, they had four and I had 28 and I thought oh hang on a minute there's something not quite right here maybe I'm doing this not correctly so I decided to keep going with it anyway so I've then just for the purposes of today I've expanded out this communicate section down here so I've closed up ones you can't see the elements underneath them anymore but you can see all of the elements that I've got under communicate. So my three main elements, I had briefing and then I had a rec recording what we do and I had dissemination of what we do. And if you look under these ones, it's um, we've then got the three elements underneath briefing. So we'll just continue to talk with those. Just as an example on how the frameworks work again, if you have this um, communicate one selected over on the right hand side here, it does tell you the description of the um, Third element and cross referenced. I don't have any cross references yet. Um, so, as you can see, this is intuitive, it's easy, it's, I'm loving it, <laughs> put it that way. Um, but we do hit this problem of actually stop doing this distillation here. Where do I stop adding up elements? Where do I stop having 24 kind of thing? So if we're just expanding out the, I've got those in the wrong order, the brief again, that was this one, wasn't it? No, that's expanding communicate. Now I'm expanding out the brief. <laughs> so um, we've got the brief your audience, we've got brief, um, briefing consistency and handover. So there's three different things that I'm looking for when I look at the competency of a forecaster to brief somebody. So I want to know that they know their user, that they're actually looking at what their, uh, their audience needs and take what they're saying and the language that you, they're using to that particular audience. Then consistency is that we have written products and then we have the briefing that is based on the written. If you, just as an example, if you're briefing a pilot and you say on your product that you're expecting to have fog and then you give them a briefing and you talk about your product and you don't mention fog, then that's inconsistent. So there's that element. And then the final element is the handover, which is where you've got one meteorologist handing over to another meteorologist, and they need to um, pass over all of the relevant information from one to the other. The briefing side has three particularly um, distinct sets within it. So just again, I had tried to figure out what you've got the competencies, See out the window which is the next set of competencies or the elements and dual bits which is the three different sites of briefing where does that stop and where do I just start working in my course so that's the big question and and, and this is in discussion with some of my colleagues is that you, that you stop with the rot 
So the framework, which is over here, is all of the non-perishables. So that communicate in terms of provide, that's non-perishable. That should not change throughout time, essentially. You have to be able to communicate in terms of providing briefings. Perishable is how you actually do that briefing. So if you do that briefing over a VHF radio, or if you do it over a satellite phone, or if you do it over a mobile phone, those are things which will change in time. So with those things, it doesn't matter. The, the, the skill, the competency is being able to brief. The tool or the system that you use, or even the, um, the format that you use, is perishable. It's something which will change over time. So that's what I think should be at the course level activity type style. It means that you will be changing all of those perishables in your course, but you shouldn't, once you've, once you've got it developed sufficiently, you shouldn't ever have to change your framework. Your framework should stay stable unless you've got some major industry, like a vet sector changes the standard or something like that. So that's what I think. Um, and that's what a couple of my colleagues on discussion that we've come up with. So that's what I would propose is that anything perishable goes in your course, anything non-perishable stays in your course framework. So just the last minute comment, um, when you're linking something back, just to show you how simple it is, I've gone over to my course now, which is called Igloo, because it's the blocks of learning for Antarctic um, meteorology. And down here, under competencies, I've just I've got a lesson in here. Under competencies, I've got um, you've got the search function, and you can add whatever one. So I've attached the Antarctic um, competency framework to this course, and then with each activity, I can just choose which ones this actually builds to. Now, so I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to say that this activity and this activity and this activity is enough to say that, that they are competent at this particular performance criterion and therefore the, the top level competency. But as I said, this is the start. So pretty short talk, as I said. What do you think? Does perishable versus non-perishable work for a community standard of practice? I've got a discussion forum on my course and um, I'm kind of hoping that we might come up with something that I can collate and submit to Moodle to the community, the Moodle community as something to be used um, in the future. So I am just going to open up for discussion now and see what you think. Uh, I'm just noticing a lot of you don't have actual microphones attached, you've just got um, sound. So it might have to be back on here. All right, what have we got? Lindy likes my logic, that's excellent. Shane, great definitions which should give good consistency, I'm hoping so. Logic, what's been the feedback from participants? Do you mean, Shane, do you mean my participants or do you mean participants in here? Okay, so my participants, not much yet. The people that I've talked to about it think it makes sense. Um, but as I'm only developing it, I haven't actually used it on anybody yet. I'm still in the developing phase. Sounds promising. Lindy likes the terms. The key question is, yeah, can it survive past technology change? Yeah, agreed. <laughs> Scott's going to rewatch this. Excellent. Awesome. Does anyone see any major problems with this approach? I'm just going to chime in very quietly because Bobby's now asleep and it's quicker than me typing. Um, <laughs> <I know. laughs> I think 
when I first saw the title of your presentation, I'm oh, perishable, non-perishable. I think I know where you're going with it, but I'm not absolutely sure. So for your own people, they'll probably get that right off the bat. But if you're trying to extend this to a Moodle community, there needs to be real clarity around perishable and non-perishable and how you categorize them. So the questions you would ask to get to, is this a perishable or is it a non-perishable? So I think your, your technology one, can it survive past the technology changing is relevant. Um, yep. For that sector and possibly for your own courses as well, is this taught in multiple courses? So is it a course-based thing because it's only relevant to this particular area of uh, meteorology or is it a wider thing because, you know, there's uh, multiple areas of our industry or our organisation that deal with this? Communication is obviously going to be across an organisation, not just in this particular department. But um, human resources might have a very specific mediation communication course that has more specific non-perishables -perish, uh, in it. So, see, I'm already making mistakes. <laughs> um, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it absolutely does. I might um, start up a, a conversation or even use a discussion forum with you after this um, to get some of that down because I like the way you've termed it. <laughs> um, this is one of my problems trying to figure out exactly how to, how to define it. So, yeah, that's really helpful. Um, ours, our communication stuff, it's um, it's funny, we've, we've got different sections like the aviation section will be interested in communication but they'll use different system tools. It's possible and likely I think that they'd be able to use the same communication course framework um, which does make me wonder if I should separate that out from Antarctic stuff. Hmm, you've got me thinking Lindy, how dare you. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Um, <laughs> My bad. Oh, no, no. It's excellent. It's excellent. It's just what I wanted. <laughs> so, um, okay. another question there could be is this a generic or is this a specific? Um, you know, you've, you've just pointed out aviation might use very specific technologies or tools to deal with their communication, but they're still going to go back to the generics of it needs to be clear, it needs to be consistent, um, it may need to be mindful of any um, uh, equality type issues. Um, I can't think of any off the top because I'm brain dead. So <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what that's like. <laughs> oh, I do. You have no idea how many doubts I had about doing this talk today. <laughs> that's all. Oh, I'm so impressed. <laughs> I just called it last month and went, no, I am too brain dead to be coherent for iMooch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. All right. Um, Lindy, I'm going to come, come back. Thank you very much. Um, I am just going to, I'm just briefly looking, vaguely even looking at the others. Tabitha missed the beginning because She's got sick kids. I know where you're at with that. <laughs> um, Tabitha, it's on again tonight if you want to talk tonight. Otherwise, the recording will be there. Melanie, site is too old. Okay. I did, um, yeah, 3.2 is great. <laughs> um, Scott, perishable, non-perishable is good. It's different from vet perspective. Yeah, okay. You want on whether the competencies have to fit work with your definition. Okay, awesome. <laughs> well, let me just quickly jump in, Michelle, and uh, just want to take this this opportunity to just say thank you very much for sharing and appreciate the fact that you do have a kid and and giving your time up <laughs> with all the all the issues that come with that and um, a really good presentation. Thanks. Uh, for doing that today. So, and um, yeah, please keep the questions going, people, if there's anything for Michelle. Yeah, um, I'm going to jump over to the discussion forum when we um, close off here. So, um, the one that's actually attached to my course. So, feel free to, to add more there. I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts. It'd be great too if we could come up with something that sort of fits for everyone. <laughs>